1998, the baseball world was spellbound as veteran slugger Mark McGuire and rising superstar Sammy Sosa went head-to-head -head in an epic home run race that held the nation captive for an intense six-month showdown. Indeed, it was this titanic battle that brought massive popularity to the phenomenal and outstanding player that was Sammy Sosa. But then, BAM! The corked bat bombshell dropped like a thunderbolt from the blue, and everything changed. Suddenly, this man, who was supposed to be the biggest name in baseball history, became engrossed in a scandal that could mar his career and legacy forever. Sammy Sosa burst onto the big league scene on June 16, 1989, wearing the Texas Rangers uniform and ready to conquer center field. In a twist of fate, his first major league home run was a round tripper against none other than Roger Clemens, a name which was also later marred by PED allegations. Well, Sosa wouldn't stay too long with the Texas Rangers because later that season, he was shipped to the Chicago White Sox. Fast forward to 1990, and Sosa posted a 233 average with 15 homers, 70 RBIs, and 10 triples, showing off his speed with a whopping 32 stolen bases in 153 games. However, 91 was bumpy as he slumped hard, slashing a dismal 203, 240, 335. So, before the 92 season kicked off, Sosa got traded again to the crosstown Chicago Cubs in exchange for outfielder George Bell. In his first year with the Cubs, Sosa played 67 games with only 262 at-bats and batted 260. Well, while not earth-shattering, these stats showed he was on the upswing and he was still just 23 years old. Then, the following year, he exploded onto the scene. He crushed 33 homers, drove in 93 runs, crossed home plate 92 times, and swiped 38 bases. That season, he etched his name in Cubs history as the franchise's first ever 30-30 player. But his outstanding performances didn't stop there. The next four seasons from 94 to 97 were marked by remarkable consistency for Slam and Sammy, which had become this big star's popular nickname. Within this period, he averaged 133 games played, 80 runs, 102 RBIs, 144 hits, and 34 home runs each season. But the most interesting part is that his best was yet to come. There's no doubt that this player's journey is truly a unique one, because back in 1998, Sammy Soso was just an ordinary name floating in the bleachers of Chicago's Wrigley Field, where fans sipped on beer and shrugged. But fast forward to just five months later, the man behind that nickname was parading down Manhattan's famed Canyon of Heroes. And yes, he became the first athlete from a non-New York team to share the same honor accorded to legends like Charles Lindbergh, John Glenn, and Nelson Mandela. Truthfully, at the start of this run on May 25th, Sosa's nine homers seemed like mere blips on the radar. Meanwhile, the Cardinals' Mark McGuire had already slammed 24, but then, out of nowhere, Sosa smashed not one but two homers on that very night, setting off an explosion of 23 more homers in the next 32 days. Suddenly, he was in the hunt to break Roger Maris's 37-year-old record of 61 homers in a single season. However, disaster struck on September 18th, and Hurricane George decided to pound Sosa's homeland, the Dominican Republic. And what did this player do? Well, he turned his post-game interviews into a plea for donations to help his people. Plus, you could tell that all these events were affecting his game. In the end, McGuire narrowly edged out Sosa 70-66. But hey, no worries at all. The Cubs wrote Sosa's NL MVP performance with a league-leading 134 runs, 416 total bases, and a whopping 158 RBIs, which was the most for the club since 1949. They also punched their first playoff ticket in nine long years. Moving forward, Sosa's star shone even brighter on a postseason trip to Japan, where he impressed the foreign minister so much that Japan donated 1,000 houses to his hurricane-battered homeland. Come Christmas that same year, he lit up the White House tree. And then, at the State of the Union address in January, President Clinton introduced Sosa as a hero in not one but two countries. During the 1999 season, Sosa went on an absolute tear, smashing 63 home runs. But he wasn't done there. In 2001, he cranked it up even further, launching an amazing 64 home runs. And this was made more impressive because the feat made him the first player to achieve the incredible milestone of hitting 60 or more home runs three times in his career. Plus, if you thought his 1998 stats were mind-boggling, then check out his 2001 slash line of 328, 437, 737. 
Yep, those numbers are just plain ridiculous. It was totally clear for everyone to see that from 1993 to 2003, Sammy Sosa had a decade-long run that would make any Cubs fan grin from ear to ear. He stood as the greatest Cubs player over that span in the team's storied history. His trophy case was a treasure trove of accolades, with not only the Roberto Clemente and NL MVP awards, but also seven NL All-Star selections, six Silver Slugger awards, a Hank Aaron award, a Babe Ruth Home Run award, and an MLB Player's Choice NL Outstanding Player award. But then just as quickly as Sammy Sosa had risen to national fame, his meteoric ascent would soon hit a brick wall because 2003 proved to be a very terrible year for him. No doubt, this outstanding player's impressive runs had made headlines all over the globe, and he was one of baseball's most beloved players. But the first domino was about to fall. This successful player's world came crashing down in a fateful showdown between the Chicago Cubs and the Tampa Bay Devil Rays on June 3, 2003. It was on this day that the umpires gave him the boot for wielding a corked bat, a shocking and terrible breach of baseball's sacred rules. Now picture this. The game is in full swing, and Sosa, with his legendary swing, smacks a pitch. Then, boom, his bat explodes into shards, like a fireworks show on the 4th of July. Umpires swoop in, snatching the suspicious bat, and after some hushed deliberation, the verdict's in. The bat was corked. The crowd gasps, and Sosa's out of there in a flash, ejected faster than a race car on Nitro. But that's just the beginning. In the wake of this expulsion, Major League Baseball swooped in, seizing 76 of Sosa's other bats for a thorough investigation. Astonishingly, every single one of them came out clean as a whistle, without even a trace of cork. Well, because he wanted things to die down, Sosa offered a mea culpa, admitting that he had mistakenly used the corked bat, which he claimed was solely for batting practice. However, his once shining Major League achievements were suddenly cast in doubt. On June 6th, he received an eight-game suspension without pay, but the ban was later reduced to seven games after an appeal. Of course, the fallout from this scandal sent shockwaves through the baseball world. Even former Yankees manager Joe Torre, in expressing his disappointment, said, Unfortunately, it's a dirty mark when you consider all he's accomplished. It's really unfortunate for the game. Everybody's scratching their heads right now. It's embarrassing. He's too good of a player. It's too bad. The final nail in the coffin for the relationship between this embattled player and the Cubs came in late 2004. Sosa suddenly requested to sit out the last game of the season, which happened to be at home against the Atlanta Braves. But not only did he ask to sit it out, he also made an early exit from Wrigley Field during the contest, and that marked the last time Sosa would ever sport a Chicago Cubs uniform. As if those controversies were not enough already, the New York Times dropped another bombshell six years after the corked bat incident. They reported that the former Chicago Cubs sensation had appeared on a list of players who had tested positive for steroids in 2003. Moreover, his numbers were inconsistent in 2003, which was the year of the mysterious positive test, pointing out that something might have truly been amiss. Think about it, Sosa, who was known for his blistering bat, found himself with a mere 40 home runs that season, his lowest in seven long years. The numbers just didn't add up. Was it age catching up to him, or perhaps a sudden halt to the Enhancer Express? Well, we can't tell for sure, but we know that the superstar's offensive prowess, which was once sky high, began to plummet across the board. Baseball fans argued that he must have been on PEDs and stopped just before the report was made public. Sosa's connection to a certain trainer, Angel Presinol, also raised more than a few eyebrows. This trainer, who had also worked with the likes of Alex Rodriguez and Juan Gonzalez, was once under investigation for his role in the A-Rod steroid saga, which unraveled between 2001 and 2003. Luckily for Sosa, though, the baseball world hadn't quite caught up to the PED game back in 2003, so there were no penalties for first-time positive tests, and it seemed like the embattled player had found a loophole to dance through. Plus, despite the damning reports, Sosa never came clean about using PEDs during his illustrious MLB career. He even shared a stage with Rafael Palmero, Jose Canseco, and Mark McGuire at a 2005 hearing. There, his attorney firmly stated that he had never dabbled in PEDs. Of course, the cloud of suspicion hung heavy, but Sosa's lips remained sealed. Moreover, the paper surprisingly never mentioned the kind of drugs these men had taken. 
Sadly, though, controversies have a way of dampening even the brightest stars, because from that point onward, this once electrifying star faded rapidly. He went from being a powerhouse to a shadow of his former self, with averages of 23 home runs, 72 RBIs, 53 runs, and a meager 243 batting average from 2004 to 2007. And, of course, the numbers don't lie. They all tell a sad tale of fallen decline.